So now that we've set our simulation basis, we have now entered the simulation environment. The screen has changed and we have a new palette of tools appear on the right hand side here. Now it is from this palette of tools that we define our various streams and unit operations that make up our flow sheet. So the next thing we're going to do is to explore material streams, energy streams, and see how they can calculate physical properties for us. This is really quite important and again is a very useful way to use a process simulator to help you with, for example, hand calculation. Now, when we look at the tools palette here, we'll see that there is a blue arrow and if we mouse over it, it says it's a material stream and a red arrow, which when moused over says it's an energy stream. Let's look at a material stream first and see how we define a flow of material. Now, if you recall our block diagram, the first thing we have is water. So we're going to put a material stream that pertains to water on the screen. So I single left click the blue arrow, move my cursor to the screen and single left click where I want the water stream to appear. Now, when that arrow is dropped onto the um, flow sheet background, we'll see that it is light blue. A light blue material stream means that it is not fully defined. And so the first thing we need to do is to actually make that definition. So I'm going to double left click on the material stream. And then the first thing that opens is my stream definition box. Now this has a number of tabs associated with it and a number of menu options that appear in each tab. We're just going to look at the worksheet tab and we're going to work our way through pertinent options here on the left hand side. Now, a material stream needs a certain minimum amount of information in order to be defined. We need to have a full description of all the chemical species in terms of composition. We need to know a flow rate. We need to know a pressure and we need to know a temperature. Now, if we give this process simulator too little information, you will see that the status bar is yellow and it will try and prompt you to figure out what it doesn't know. At the moment it says unknown flow rate. So what we'll do is we'll follow the prompts given by this status bar down here to work our way through what it is we have to define. So we've got an unknown flow rate. So let's start off by defining a molar flow rate. We said that 50% excess water was required over and above the methane flow and the methane flow was 100 kilomoles per hour. So we're going to put in 150 kilomoles per hour of water. Now usefully, Unisim still says unknown flow rate. The reason why it says that is because it doesn't know the flow rate of the individual chemical species. What we've defined here is an overall flow rate that corresponds to this stream. And in a given stream, we can have many components. So let's now click on the composition tab and we'll define what this stream actually contains. Now we see here on the left-hand side, I have the four components in my simulation present and that at the moment, this stream doesn't have an association with any of them. We want to make this stream pure water. So we're going to double click water and we're going to put in 1.0 as a mole fraction. And as soon as we do that, another window appears. And it's within this window that we can specify the composition exactly. Now I can specify compositions on a mole fraction basis, but I can also specify it on a mass fraction basis or a liquid volume fraction basis as well. Note that I can also specify the molar flow and the mass flow or volumetric flow of a given species as well. Now, when I specify the molar flow and the mass flow and the liquid volumetric flow, I do not need to specify the overall flow rate of the stream. Unisim will just simply add up all the individual flow rates to, to produce that. If I'm using fractional bases though, for example, mole fractions, I do need to define the overall flow rate because all Unisim will know is that the mole fractions add to one, but it doesn't know how to link that to an overall flow rate. So for pure water, I'm gonna have a mole fraction of one. I don't need to put zero in methane, carbon monoxide and hydrogen, that will be assumed automatically. So now I'm just gonna single left click, okay. So now that I've said what the overall flow of the stream is and the composition of the stream is, Unisim understands what the flow rate is. And now I can see in my yellow box here, it says unknown temperature. 
So I'm going to go back to conditions, single left click on conditions, and I'm going to enter a temperature. And remember that we said that water enters our flow sheet at 25 degrees C. So I'm going to simply enter 25. Unisim accepts that and then says now unknown pressure. Note that pressure here is measured in kPa. So one bar atmospheric is going to be 100 kPa. But look, if I single left click here and put in one, I can then drop down here what pressure units I'm actually choosing. So I don't have to remember that one bar is 100 kPa. I can just simply put in one bar. Now, when I've done that, Unisim says, fine, I know all the information I need now to calculate this material flow. And now that I have calculated this material flow, I can give you lots of data. So let's just pause for a second and examine the data that we've got. So we said that we had water at 25 degrees C at one bar atmospheric or 100 kPa and flowing at 150 kilomoles per hour. Knowing the molecular weight, we now have the mass flow, but we have a lot more than that as well. We have the energy flow associated with it. We have the phase. Zero means it's liquid. One means that it is vapor. A value between zero and one means that it is somewhere between vapor and liquid. It's, it's the vapor fraction in effect. What's even nicer is that if I click on this properties box here, I can then add various properties that I wish Unisim to calculate. For example, if I open up the standard property set, let's say I want to know the heat capacity of water under these conditions. So I'm going to single left click heat capacity and apply. And we'll see that it is 75 kilojoules per kilomole degrees C. However, we may be used to seeing heat capacity numbers in kilojoules per kilogram degrees C. Note kg mole here is Unisim's way of saying kilomoles. So I'm going to click plus again. I'm going to open up the standard list again. And I'm going to go down to M where I have mass heat capacity. And I'm going to single left click that and apply it. And there we go, 4.202 kilojoules per kilogram degrees C. And if we examine the list of correlations for physical properties we have here, we have a massive amount of data that we can extract from Unisim so long as we have a suitably validated thermodynamic model. So this will apply to single components, but also very useful the mixtures of components. And that's where its real power comes to the forefront. If you have a mixture of hydrocarbons and want to know their bubble point at a certain pressure, then all you need to do is define the composition, define the pressure, and it'll tell you the bubble point temperature or the dew point temperature. And so it really does make calculation of mixture physical properties very straightforward. So let's return to my conditions box. There's one final thing I want to do, and that's to change the stream name, because by default, Unisim will just number the streams, one, two, three, four, five, which when you have a flow sheet containing 50 streams, isn't particularly informative. So I'm gonna single left click in that box, and I'm just gonna put liquid water as my name. And so I now have a human readable name that I know what corresponds to that stream. So there we go, there is liquid water. So that is how to define a material stream. Now let's just think for a second around energy streams, because that's the other arrow we have here. Let's single left click an energy stream and drop that on our flow sheet. And let's double click this again and see what's in here. We have not as many options in an energy stream definition. What we can do here is to supply an energy flow. For example, if we had a pump, we could say, I want to deliver 100 watts or 50 kilowatts to this pump. I would simply click on the heat flow box here, type in 50 and select my unit of kilowatts, which is 1.8 times 10 to the five kilojoules per hour, which is Unisim's default unit. And then I can feed that to unit operation that requires energy, a pump, a compressor, a heat exchanger, for example. And I can see for a pump or a compressor what pressure difference 50 kilowatts would make, or for a heat exchanger, what difference 50 kilowatts of energy would make to the temperature of a stream. Very often what we'll do is we'll allow Unisim itself to calculate how much energy it needs in an energy stream, rather than give Unisim how much energy is present in an energy stream. And we'll illustrate that more in the next bit of the flow sheet construction.